Imagine this. You're nearing the end of your project, crossing the T's, dotting the I's, getting cross-functional approval on your design. Then comes your quality engineering or reliability engineering friend with a big red stop button. We don't want that. Listen in and I'll tell you a way to avoid that. Hello and welcome to Quality During Design, the place to use quality thinking to create products others love for less. My name is Diana. I'm a senior level quality professional and engineer with over 20 years of experience in manufacturing, design, and quality. Listen in and then join the conversation at qualityduringdesign.com. You're at the end of your design process, proud of what you've accomplished, and then come other people from other cross-functional groups, and they're saying no. Quality engineering and reliability engineering friends are pointing out some problems with your design. Quality and reliability. Something that it's important to know is that it's an input into your design process. It is not quality control for the design process. There have been many times that I heard designers say, I didn't know I could ask for that analysis and get that type of information. And I've heard numerous quality engineering and reliability engineering people say, I really wish they had involved me earlier. I could have helped them with that or made it better for them. If we wait until we have a prototype in our hand to start applying quality methods and getting input from our quality and reliability friends, it's too late. We're too far down the design path. By not applying quality thinking earlier, we've missed out on a lot of opportunities that would have been easy to implement and have great lasting effects on our product design. By not involving our quality friends earlier in the design process, we've missed out on some opportunities to make our design more robust more functional, safer, and easy to use. We've missed an opportunity to arrange supplier agreements with details that reduce risk. We've missed a better understanding of the in-process manufacturing testing needs or design for manufacturability. And we've missed opportunities to design out risk because we didn't thoroughly understand the risks in our product not working our user not understanding how it works, or our manufacturers not understanding critical features of a component. Besides the missed opportunities, applying quality methods and tools and thinking during the design process also helps facilitate cross-functional input early. I facilitated many quality analysis meetings with a cross-functional team. So the team consisted of product designers, but also marketing, field ops, other independent designers, regulatory, manufacturing, and there is not one analysis that I've helped perform where the designers just happened to capture all of the risk on their own. In many cases, there was a lot of learning happening between all the cross-functional groups. To conclude this episode, recognize that the methods that quality and reliability engineers use can result in design inputs. Inputs that you can take advantage of early as opportunities to implement the right type of controls in your best design. Get your quality engineering and reliability engineering friends involved early, even at the black box phase, where you only have inputs, outputs, and a black box as a design. If you're in a design project now and haven't gotten your QE and RE friends involved yet, reach out, tell them about your project, See how they'd like to get involved. And check in at qualityduringdesign.com because I'll be sharing tips, tricks, and other educational opportunities to help you learn what analysis you can ask your friends for, at what point in your design process you can apply it, and what you can do with the results. This has been a production of Dini Enterprises. Thanks for listening.